So that is it, guys, for the 2019 Mexican Grand Prix race. It was a race that was not too great, but not terrible. It has some interesting things in it. And in this video, we are going to try and look at what happened exactly in this Mexican Grand Prix. Now, before we get into the teams and how they all did, the results haven't officially been confirmed, and that's why I cannot show you the official uh, race results that they normally put out right after a race is finished. So I'm going to have to use my results graphic. Now, Nico Hulkenberg is in 13th place in this graphic, but I don't know if he actually finished there. So... Sorry about that, but we don't know the official results as of yet. So, winning this Grand Prix, as you'll see in a moment, was Lewis Hamilton in P1 from Sebastian Vettel in P2. As Lewis Hamilton takes yet another step towards winning the World Championship in 2019. And then as it swings on by, Valtteri Bottas was third. Charles Leclerc was fourth. Alex Albon was fifth. Max Verstappen was sixth. Seventh was Sergio Perez. 8th, Daniel Ricciardo. 9th, Daniel Kvyat. 10th, Pierre Gasly. And then it was Stroll, Sainz, Hulkenberg, Giovinazzi, and then Magnussen, Russell, I believe. And then Roman Grosjean, Robert Kubica rounding out the field for the people who finished. And your only retirements were Kimi Raikkonen and Lando Norris. So there you go. There is, I think... Your finishing order for the Mexican Grand Prix. Again, that is provisional. It's not confirmed yet, but I think that is the order for now. But now let's get into the teams and how they perform. So first off, Mercedes. Great day for them. Winning the race. Their first win in Mexico since 2016, where this man won that day. And today, even though he has not officially won the World Championship, he has really took a big step towards it with a great race victory where at the start, of course, he got tangled up with Max Verstappen, was down to P5. Then once the virtual safety car, um, you know, ended, passed Carlos Sainz very quickly, got up to the back of Albon, Albon pitted, and then he did very well to pull a gap on him to make sure he wasn't racing Albon later on in the, in the Grand Prix. Then Leclerc pitted and he closed up Lewis to the back of Sebastian Vettel. And then the team performed the undercut. And because Sebastian Vettel pitted a lot later on, that allowed Lewis Hamilton to win the Grand Prix. Did very well to uh, have the pace to uh, get past Sebastian on the undercut. And also did very well to manage his tyres in those final 30 laps or so. So great drive by Lewis Hamilton. And he absolutely does deserve to win the Grand Prix. Valtteri Bottas, considering his crash and him starting in sixth place, I think Valtteri did the best he could today. His pace wasn't amazing. I don't think his pace was terrible, but it was okay considering how quick the car was. He could have maybe got after Sebastian Vettel, but Vettel was so hard to pass in a straight line because, of course, of how quick the Ferrari car is in a straight line. So, realistically, unless he was right up the gearbox of Sebastian, he was never going to pass him. But Valtteri, I think, did, I wouldn't say okay, but decent today. I thought he was decent. Did fall behind the two McLarens, but got, ahead, uh, got back ahead of those two McLarens. He did puncture Max Verstappen's tyre. Not sure yet if that was his fault, but I'm not sure it was from what I've seen so far. But I'll have a look at it again. But... Yeah, Valtteri drove fine. But the team, of course, first and third. The result they were uh, not really expecting, but that's the result they got. Next up, Ferrari. And again, Ferrari completely bottled it by having a 1-2 in the first 15 laps. They were not comfortable, but they were not exactly, you know, massively under threat for their 1-2. And Inaki Rueda... Their strategist, their infamous strategist, blew the race for them by pitting Charles Leclerc too early and onto tyres where he had to pit again. Because, of course, he went from medium to medium. So that was a, an awful decision. If you're going to pit Charles that early, put him on the hard compound tyre so you can possibly go to the end if you want to. But no, they had to pit again. And that destroyed Charles Leclerc's race. And for Sebastian Vettel, after Lewis Hamilton pitted the lap before they had to pit him they had to and they didn't they left him out for another 10 laps and he lost the race so yeah 
awful race, second and fourth. And if anyone out there can please try and convince me why Inaki Rueda doesn't deserve to be sacked, please let me know because there is no way you can accept this level of just horrible decision making. He's so bad at strategy as Inaki Rueda, so bad. And I cannot believe that Ferrari are persisting with a guy who was cocked up so many times in the last two or three years in the same areas. Can't believe that they still keep him. And I'm telling you now, until they get a new strategist, Ferrari are never winning the World Championship. They will never win the World Championship until Anaki Rueda is not the strategist of Ferrari. No way they're going to win because even if they have the best car or a faster car than Mercedes, they're going to cock it up somehow, some way, which they always do. So yeah, Ferrari, awful day, and they've thrown away yet another 1-2 finish. Next up, Red Bull. Well, this weekend could have been so much more. Uh, first off for Alex Albon, I thought he drove actually quite well today. His pace was a lot stronger in the race than it was in qualifying. He was in third place for quite a time and had a very good start to the Grand Prix. So well done for Albon for having a good Grand Prix. At the end, he wasn't really in contention, but let's be honest, we kind of expected that, you know, compared to Hamilton, Vettel, Bottas and Leclerc. Max Verstappen, though, finishing a sixth and I think kind of only has himself to blame. One, for starting where he did because of what happened in qualifying. Then at the start, I think was a bit unlucky with what happened with Lewis Hamilton. But then passed Valtteri Bottas very aggressively down the inside at turn 13. And again, I haven't seen enough replays to determine whether anyone is really at fault. But did Max have to go for the gap there? Did he really have to go for it? Especially when you consider Valtteri was going to get DRS back on him anyway down the pit straight. I'm not sure, but I think this weekend we've seen further evidence to something uh, that is a weakness of Max Verstappen, which is the tide is against him and he's angry. It just keeps going against him because he will respond with more aggression and that aggression will then cost him like it did today. So you got to say Max Verstappen has thrown away a race victory, I think. This weekend, he definitely would have been in the fight for P1, P2, but he threw it away in qualifying and then ended all of his hopes of a podium in the first few laps of the Grand Prix. So very disappointing there for the Red Bull team. Now into the midfield, though. First off, Renault. Daniel Ricciardo, for me, driver of the day because he did over 50 laps on hard compound tyres and his pace was actually really good. It's not like he dropped off the cliff with his tyres. His pace was very strong and consistent as the race went on. Great drive by Ricardo and a great result in P8. Maybe he could have overtook Perez. He did have that one great opportunity to do so and he locked up and went off the uh, escape road onto the grass at turn one. If he got past then, I think he would have stayed ahead and that was really his only chance to get past. But still, great drive, P8 and... For me, was driver of the day. Nico Hulkenberg. I wouldn't say Hulkenberg did well today, but he did okay. His pace was nowhere near Daniel Ricciardo's in the other Renault. But at the end of the race, it is a bit tough luck for him. You know, getting took out by Daniel Kvyat. And even if Daniel gets a penalty, then Nico still won't get any points. So that is tough luck for him. But... Nico didn't really do that well today. He was quite a bit off the pace of his teammate, uh, Daniel Ricciardo. And I think Hulkenberg was one of the early drivers to pit. And clearly, that did not work, even though he did start on the medium compound tyre. But Renault, a better race. But if you compare what they've done today compared to Toro Rosso and Racing Point, it's still not quite what they were hoping for coming into the weekend because Racing Point have outscored them and Racing Point uh, look very dangerous in these final three races to overtake Renault still in the constructors and still do, in my opinion, Toro Rosso. So a better race, but an overall result that is not quite good enough still. Next up though, McLaren. They were looking so good 
in the early points of the Grand Prix, they were running in 6th and 7th place on the soft compound tyre. The soft compound tyre was not working at all, but they were looking good. And after their pit stops, well, for Lando, of course, at his first pit stop, everything went wrong where the left front or right front, can't remember exactly, wheel was not on. But Carlos Sainz, after his pit stop, had no pace whatsoever. I have no idea why. I'm going to assume it's because of a badly... Um, I guess bad set of tyres, maybe, maybe bad tyre wear, I'm not sure why, I'll have to see what the drivers um, have said after the Grand Prix is finished, but yeah, very bad pace for McLaren and scored no points today, they're going to still finish in fourth in the Constructors, but yeah, their pace was very, very bad after that first pit stop and not good at all for them. Next up, Alfa Romeo. Yeah, speed was not good. Antonio Giovinazzi actually was doing quite well, and I feel a bit sorry for him because the whole thing at the pit stop where his car was dropped off the jacks too quickly and he drove off with the rear tyre not on. I have to say, Alpha, they're really just performing very poorly as a team at the moment because that pit stop was just a calamity. Calamity of errors, comedy of errors even. And then that did cost Antonio, I think... Maybe a points finish today because he wasn't that far behind those types of drivers that ended up right in there for the points. So, yeah, I think that's disappointing for Antonio. But again, for Alpha, they just don't have a car anymore like they had earlier on in the season that can compete with Racing Point, McLaren, Renault. And that is disappointing to see, but that's just the way it is. Of course, Kimi Raikkonen retired at the end. I don't know why, but he, he wasn't really heading for that good of a result anyway. Next up, Haas. No point talking about them. They were crap. And now let's go on to Toro Rosso, who had an up and down race. I think at one point they were looking very good. They had jumped Carlos Sainz. They were looking as though they might be able to get to P8, maybe a P9. But then Kvyat pitted again. Um, and then also, uh, Pierre Gasly, I think, pitted again. And they have, for now, finished in P9 and P10. But I think Daniel will get a penalty of some sort for what he did to Nico Hulkenberg. But it maybe didn't quite go as well as they would have hoped if they were to beat the two McLarens. Um, I think the pace of Perez and Ricardo may have surprised them. But if they do somehow keep that P9 and P10, it is a good result, I think, still, considering you know, the relative pace of other cars, but they were outscored by Renault still. So, not the best race. Could have been a lot better for Toro Rosso, but I think, you know, the pace this weekend has been good and they should still be upbeat going into the rest of the season because they can still get after Renault in the constructors. They do have a good car. And so, and so do, rather, racing points. Sergio Perez... What a performance. Probably his best performance at his home track that he's put in since 2015. And yeah, Perez was great today. Really got after the two Toro Rossos and the two McLarens. And once he pitted finally in the Grand Prix, his speed was very good. And he just about hung on for P7 ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. Great drive. And those types of drives are the types of drives that do get you another position in the constructor. So very good drive there by Perez. And Lance Stroll, I thought Lance drove really well today, but the problem again is he he isn't qualifying well enough. If he qualified better, then I think today he would have actually scored points. But because he keeps qualifying poorly, that's why he can't end up in the points. I think he actually might end up nicking P10 if Kvyat does get a big penalty. But again, if he can sort out his qualifying, the pace in the race is right there with Lance Stroll. But the qualifying pace has got to be sorted out because Racing Point can do a lot better if he can improve his pace on a Saturday. But anyway, that is it for the 2019 Mexican Grand Prix, guys. Make sure to check out my incident analysis tomorrow. And until then, guys, I will see you all then.